Mr. Clark. Mr. President, the next bill, 475, is a bill by Senator Chambers. It's a bill for an act relating to discrimination and amends numerous sections. It renames the Nebraska Fair Employment Practice Act, prohibits discrimination based upon sexual orientation or marital status. It was introduced on January 17, referred to the Judiciary Committee, advanced to general file. There are committee amendments pending, Mr. President. Senator Chambers, you're recognized open on LB 475. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the legislature, this is a bill that is going to touch people in different ways. There are some who hold to outmoded notions that a person is gay or lesbian, or to use the general term homosexual, by choice or by training. That is not the case, in my opinion. The purpose of this bill is to carry out the stated intent of the state of Nebraska and the policy expressed. I handed out the statement of intent so that you can see what I presented to the committee. It's a thumbnail sketch of the bill and the approach that is being taken. There are two attachments. One relates to the standards that judges must adhere to based on the Nebraska Code of Judicial Conduct, which governs whatever judges do. A violation of this code can subject a judge to something as mild as a reprimand or as serious as removal from the bench. One of the things stated in Canon 3, that's C-A-N-O-N, these canons are the principles according to which judges function. The term canon is like another way of saying paragraph or section. So Canon 3 says in bold face, a judge shall perform the duties of judicial office impartially and diligently. There are five subdivisions. The fifth one says, a judge shall perform judicial duties without bias or prejudice. A judge shall not, in the performance of judicial duties, by words or conduct, manifest bias or prejudice, including but not limited to bias or prejudice based upon race, sex, religion, national origin, disability, age, sexual orientation, or social economic status and shall not permit any court employees, lawyers, or whoever comes before the court to engage in such bias or prejudice. It is not a secret that this society is very hostile toward people who appear different. And to most people, nothing and nobody is more different from a person who is homosexual. That is one who prefers a member of his or her own sex to a member of the opposite sex. What people do in their private life, what people do in their bedrooms, in motel rooms, in hotel rooms, is nobody's business but theirs, in my view. When Americans have so much time to put their eyes to other people's keyholes where their bedroom is concerned, put their ear against the bedroom wall, and their noses in people's crotches where their genitalia are located because they are so obsessed with that, they need to get a life. What I am concerned about is having every person entitled to employment so that he or she can provide the necessities of life for himself, herself, anybody else who may be dependent upon that person. Sexual orientation in Nebraska is very ugly and some of it manifested itself during the committee hearing. Some of those notions will be expressed on this floor. Some people will be very self-righteous and point the finger, but three will be pointing back at them on other things. When you find a group in America 
which in the opinion of many people, if not most people, is scorned, that group will be marked for scapegoating. The late Jerry Falwell said that the planes probably crashed into the towers and tornadoes come because America tolerates gay men and lesbian women. Another Christian stalwart named Pat Robertson expressed similar views. So when a bedrock doctrine of a religion is based on hatred of a group, that religion is marked for what it is. When people hide behind religion, I think it converts the whole concept of religion into a dirty thing. Fortunately for me, all I have to do is be aware that a creature is a human being and then every right available to every other human being should be accorded to them. When the state has a policy against discriminating against people, when they place themselves in a voluntary relationship such as marriage, when they go into a voluntary lifestyle such as religion, those are the last people who ought to stand on this floor and pontificate and say people choose to do this, yet their religion is what they choose to do, but they want to be protected against discrimination based on their religion. So we're going to have an opportunity to explore a lot of areas that will hit people really where they live. In addition to the code of judicial conduct prohibiting judges from discriminating or manifesting bias or prejudice based on a person's sexual orientation, there are several statutory references existing right now, and I've handed them out to you, which aim at protecting people against mistreatment based on sexual orientation, discrimination based on sexual orientation. I am not one to rely on statistics. I am not one to tell you what is going on in other states, unless you ask me and I know the answer. But in anticipating what people might ask, and I don't have a precise number, there are states, numerous cities, many companies, especially among the Fortune 500, which allow no discrimination based on sexual orientation. There are companies which have expressed a reluctance to come to Nebraska because of the attitude they have toward people who are gay or lesbian. Many of their employees are of that persuasion. And to come to a place where there is such outright hatred and contempt that it is enshrined in the Constitution and the so-called and supposed representatives of the people take a position that discrimination should be allowed, those companies have no interest in subjecting their employees to an environment such as that. What I want to do is try to get the legislature, by 25 votes at least, to say that the policy of this state, which is aimed at ensuring to every person the right to earn an honest living, and a person will not be deprived of that right based on his or her sexual orientation, in Nebraska, you can be denied a job and you have no recourse. You can have a job which you've held for decades and be fired based on sexual orientation or perceived sexual orientation and you have no recourse. You can be denied advancement One minute. or promotion based on sexual orientation or perceived sexual orientation. I don't fear homosexual men or lesbian women. I don't fear heterosexual men or heterosexual women. But what I do not like are people of any stripe 
who are going to look at somebody based on what he or she is and say, you're not quite human. And even though it is crystal clear that you are discriminated against and denied opportunities which are basic to a society, and I sit back and let that happen without doing something, I cannot do it. That is my opening, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Before we go on, Senator Karbyshek would like to announce he has a guest underneath the North Balkan. Please welcome Luke, Lucas Peterson of Crete, Nebraska. Mr. Clark? Senator Ashford, you are recognized to open on the committee amendments. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, I have the amendment, uh, committee amendments 399 to the bill. I'm going to just read it. It's short, and uh, rather than try to explain it, it's, it's, it's an important amendment. Uh, it's an amendment that the committee felt it was important uh, because it exempts religious institutions from the bill, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and read it. Uh, it indicates that the, uh, the, uh, this act shall, shall not apply to any bona fide religious organization, which organization shall include any religious corporation, organization, association, or society, or any nonprofit institution or organization operated, supervised, or controlled by or in conjunction with the religious corporation, organization, association, or society. This amendment was added by the committee at, I, I believe, am I correct, Senator Chambers, that you agreed to it? Is that correct? So I think, I think what this does is, at least for me and other, I can't speak for other members of the committee, uh, makes this a better bill. Uh, my experience on this issue dates back to the years I was in the legislature, and we had, uh, uh, a bill involving hate crimes, and uh, or I did, and uh, that bill passed the legislature with uh, sexual orientation as part of the of that bill, and uh, and those of you who, I mean, all of us remember, uh, the, I'm sure, the well publicized inst instances where uh, individuals who uh, are gay were. Uh, killed or, or severely injured uh, as, uh, as a direct result of their sexual orientation. And I was proud of the legislature uh, for the adoption of the hate crimes bill and also for the inclusion of sexual orientation. The loss of a job or the inability to obtain a job because of sexual orientation, to me, as long as religious institutions are not included, and I think those is, there are many, many issues involved there, obviously we all know what those are, uh, is an important measure. Uh, we, are, we are a free society. Uh, we, we are a society that uh, is founded on uh, our freedom, uh, our freedom of religion, our freedom to believe what we so wish. Uh, 399. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Ashford. Those wishing to speak on AM 399 are Senators Engel, Fold, Carlson, Schimmick, Chambers, Erdman, Cruz, and Avery. Senator Engel, you are recognized. Pre Mr. President, members of the body, I certainly uh, approve of the, the, the amendment to the, uh, to, to the bill. Uh, I do not uh, Prove the bill itself, and I'll tell you why. I do not. I do not appreciate anybody bashing, bullying, or doing physical harm to people because they're gay. I, those same people who would do it to a gay person would do it to anybody that they thought they could do it to. It could be a person of color. It could be a person, a weak person. It could be a female. It could be whatever, even a child. Those people are cowards in their own right, and mostly they go around in packs doing that. And those are those are what I call real hate crimes. And I think we, they do. They do have uh, our hate laws do take care of that. And if we're going to do anything here, I think if those hate laws aren't taking care of it, we should enhance those hate laws to make sure that those people pay a dear price for taking advantage of those of uh, 
uh, of gay orientation and or anybody of, of a weak nature uh, to where they, they pick on them because those people are per personally are not too far away from the animal kingdom and I, I think they should be punished. So that's not why I, um, I, I, I do oppose that happening, but I do believe we have laws on the book to protect them. Uh, also, as far as gay people themselves, I have nothing against gay people. I had a nephew who was gay. He died of AIDS several years ago before they, before they come up with this uh, medication that's uh, keeping many of them alive. That didn't keep us from loving him. Didn't, I didn't particularly personally approve of his lifestyle, but, but that was uh, what he chose. Or some people say that's the way he's oriented. Uh, either way, either way, um, uh, I, didn't, I don't believe in that type of discrimination. But the only problem I have is by giving them minority status, then I believe they're taking away a lot of the rights that uh, the rest of us have, like as an employer. Now, when, the few people I've employed in my life, I've never asked them whether they're gay or anything like that. And uh, I, I, maybe they were, maybe they weren't. I always felt most of them probably weren't, but it didn't make any difference to me. However, if they were not performing in their duties and I decided to get rid of them, not because of their sexual orientation or anything else, then, uh, then they could come up with this, uh, with this discrimination card. And that's what concerns me. I think people should be hired and fired on their ability, not on their race, creed, sexual orientation, or whatever. And that is the part of this that, that concerns me, not the... Um, uh, again, I have nothing against gay people. I have uh, uh, many people that I know that happen to be gay, and, and, and uh, I appreciate their talents. I appreciate the people, and I, uh, I don't run on some of the same packs they do, but, well, I really do, because th th there are a lot of gay people in society that, uh, that are in the business area. They work, they're workers, they're laborers. When I was in the service, it was one of the great, big, toughest sergeants we had, happened to be gay. And, and that's uh, so be it. That's the way it was. Uh, but I, I, like again, I say I do not have anything against them. I don't approve their lifestyle, but that's their business. It's not mine. It's their persuasion. And, and that's the way they are. That's the way they want to be. That's fine with me. However, I don't believe we should give them special um, uh, minority status because I think it's going to infringe upon the rights of us as employers uh, and to uh, uh, hire people for their for their abilities and not for their uh, and be able to fire them for the same reason and not because of sexual orientation. So with that, I return the rest of my time to the uh, chair. Thank you, Senator Engel. Next up is Senator Fulton, followed by Senator Carlson. Senator Fulton, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the legislature. I do support AM 399. I think that does improve the bill. I am adamantly opposed to LB 475, however, and I want, to, I want to do this reasonably. Track with me, if you will. Throughout this bill, the words Nebraska Fair Employment Practice are stricken. In fact, if you read through the bill, that's, that's the conspicuous thing, is that that's pretty much the only thing that happens throughout the bill. The words that are substituted are Employment Non-Discrimination Act. Why is that important? It exists now, fair employment. It will exist, if this were to pass, as non-discrimination. The nature of the act is changed. Fair employment is a positive. Non-discrimination is a negative. We've talked about that on other bills. Why is that so important here? Positive, to posit something, is universal. It's inclusive. To negate necessitates singularity, identity. And so when we do this, we, we have to pay better, close, more close attention to the things that are, being, um, that are being outlined. Now, there is a list that, uh, that is given, uh, page 5 of the bill and, and throughout the bill. Okay? Notwithstanding any other law or laws heretofore enacted, all cities and villages in this state shall have the power by ordinance to define, regulate, suppress, and prevent discrimination, prevent discrimination on the basis of race, color, creed, religion, ancestry, etc. This bill would add sexual orientation to that list. 
These things that are listed have a class status. They are protected within this, within statute presently. Sexual orientation will become another protected class. It will be elevated to the level of race, religion, creed. And so this is not an insignificant thing. If we were to pass LB 477, we are elevating, we are creating a new protected class. So it's very important what we do is that, it, that we recognize this isn't simply about who we discriminate against or who we don't discriminate against. This is, by policy, creating a new protected class. The third point, that new protected class which we are creating, a class based on sexual orientation, has no definition in this bill. Now, I was up late last night looking, uh, talking about uh, this bill and uh, whether other bills have been introduced in the past like this. It's my understanding other bills that have been introduced in the past do have a definition of what sexual orientation is. Why is that important? Let me give you an example. If we pass LB 475, we create a new protected class, that of sexual orientation. How far do we take sexual orientation? I will give you an example that while some may consider it, consider it extreme, is illustrative of why, illustrative, sorry, of why sexual orientation ought to have some kind of definition. Let's take for instance, there's a group called NAMBLA. It's called the North American uh, Man-Boy Love Association. In my opinion, it's a disgusting group. It exists and it's had a lot of press. That's how I even know about this group. What if there is an individual whose sexual orientation puts him in that category? Man, one boy, minute. love. And he applies for a job at one of our public schools to teach young children. Is that not cause for concern? Is it unreasonable to think that we shouldn't have someone who is an adherent of the North American Man Boy Love Association teaching in our public schools with access to young boys? Now, one could say, ah, but that would be illegal. There are, statutory, there are, are statutes which prohibit statutory rape. One, one cannot uh, have those relations with minors. But perhaps he will say, well, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I don't break the law, but I am oriented this way. Recall the words here are sexual orientation. I don't actually do this. I'm just inclined that way. I have a predilection, a preference, an orientation. Time. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Carlson, you are next, which is followed by Senator Shemmy. And you are recognized, Senator Carlson. Mr. President and members of the legislature, I don't see Senator Ashford. If he can hear this and uh, would return, I'd like to address uh, some questions to him. And until uh, such time, I would uh, like to address Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, would you yes. yield to a question? Yes, I will, or several. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Um, in the time that I've been in the legislature, uh, I believe, and I hope I'm correct, uh, you have become my friend. I'm going to ask you, do you believe I have become your friend? That remains to be seen after today. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> and with that answer, I, I think that that is my answer. That uh, The second question is, you don't know this, and I don't know this. Have you and I uh, been opposite sides on votes uh, in these four months many times? I know we've been on opposite sides sometimes, but I really don't keep count, and I, I really mean that. Okay. And uh, we'll probably be on the opposite side on this, uh, and uh, I'm going to still consider you my friend. But uh, I have a question about the amendment. Do you approve of the amendment? Yes. Why? Because it has been something that was in the bill and it, bear, it has a bearing on people's religious activity. 
The only time this amendment would come into play, and let me get it so that I won't misstate it, but if you've read the, the amendment, you see where it says that there has to be a, all right, if it's a bona fide religious organization, which organization shall include any religious corporation, organization, association, or society, or any nonprofit institution or organization operated, supervised, or controlled by, or in conjunction with a religious corporation, organization, association, or society? I'm not interested in messing with anybody's religion. And I deliberately excluded this language when I had the bill drafted, knowing it would bring Mr. Cunningham before the committee. He would offer the amendment, and I would ask him, Mr. Cunningham, if that amendment is adopted, would the Catholic Conference remove any opposition it had to the bill? He said, yes. I said I wanted the committee members to hear that from you, and I had a version of the amendment that we had put in the bill, read it to him and said, would that meet with your satisfaction? He said, that's just what I want. I said, well, you've got it. And I've got your acknowledgement here that the Catholic Church is no longer opposed to the bill. He said, that's right. So that was my strategy. But it had always been a part of the bill. Okay. I was going to follow up with the idea that uh, I've told you in the past several times that you are consistent on principle. And I guess I look at this and and uh, if this is the right thing across the board, then uh, why would the church be be excluded? But I, I accept and appreciate your answer. Uh, and I guess with that, I'll wait until Senator Ashford comes back and I'll press my light again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Carlson and Senator Chambers. Next up is Senator Schimmick, followed by Senator Chambers. Senator Schimmick, you are recognized. Yes, thank you, Mr. President and members. I can't remember how many times we've had this or similar bills before us, but it has been a number of times, and we've had a number of discussions on it. And every year I hope and think that maybe this will be the year um, that we will be able to pass it. I think it's an important bill. I think it says a lot about the character of our state. I don't know why anybody should be discriminated against in the workplace. I, I think that there are some classes of people that need the protection. That's why we have those listed in state statute already. The state of Nebraska hires um, gay and lesbian people, no questions asked. I don't know why um, any business couldn't do that. What I want to do is I want to take apart just a little bit a an email that I have received numerous times in the last day or so. The emails all have exactly the same message. And I don't think the message is very, um, it's very persuasive. There are three things in that message. And the first part of the message says that LB 475 would tie the hands of employers for whom character and sexual behavior are meaningful factors in their hiring decisions. Does this mean that people who have a homosexual persuasion don't have any character, that they're bad apples, that they're bad actors? That's what one would probably be able to gather from this. Are the, are the people who might be hired under this provision, under this bill, going to be exhibiting sexual behavior in the workplace? Why would they? Why would they? Any more than a heterosexual person would exhibit in the workplace. And maybe, some, maybe sometimes that happens. I don't know. But I think the, the reasons for, for being against LB 475 are, are very um, argumentative. The second part of the email says that LB 475 would force some religious entities to comply with the legislation. And again, I think that's been addressed in the amendment. The third part of the email says LB 475 would place the state's stamp of approval on behaviors that are demonstrably harmful to the physical and emotional health of individuals and cultures. 
Well, I would argue that being discriminated against in the workplace or anywhere else is harmful to the physical and emotional health of that person. We know of many individuals who have spent a lifetime trying to cover their sexual orientation and eventually either not being successful and, and coming out, as they say, or suffering some kind of an emotional breakdown, committing suicide, whatever. I just think these are very poor reasons given to me to oppose this bill. And I, I, I wish and I, and I hope that um, you can think about this in terms of what you would do if your son or your daughter came to you and said, I have something to tell you. And it's important to me. And they told you, he or she told you, that he or she was gay or les lesbian. One minute. I know um, how many of you would be changed in outlook by this, um, those of you who think this would be a bad bill, but I would certainly want my son or daughter to be accepted in society and to be able to get a job to take care of himself or herself. Um, I probably won't talk many times on this particular bill, but I wanted it stated for the record how I felt about it. I think it's a very important bill. I think it would really um, do a lot for a, a, a certain group of people that are very discriminated against, and I don't think it would cost you or me or those employers much at all to do it and to implement it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Chemick. Senator Chambers, you're next, followed by Senator Erdman. Mr. President, members of the legislature, as a member of one of these protected groups, it always causes me to have a very uncomfortable feeling when somebody who's a member of a protected group, as is Senator Fulton, say that others don't deserve the protection. He's protected twice. He's a Catholic and he's a Filipino. And here is one like me. Do you know why I am so sensitive to other people's hurt? Because I know what it does to me, I know what it does to my children, and I know what it does when people look at you a certain way, but they cannot treat you that way because of the law. And when we have people who have their protection pontificating like the worst of racists, bigots, and homophobes, it tells me that they've lost their way but they are comfortable in receiving a kind of protection they will deny to others. I have something I'm going to read. I wrote it. It's called Homophobes Homily, and I dedicate it to Senator Fulton, Senator, all the others who feel that way, but especially to those who are like me, already members of a protected class and want to deny protection to others. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They walk our streets. They breathe our air. They're under beds and on the stair, like lurking monsters in their lair. They're on the ships. They're in the air. They're working here. They're working there. On railroads, taking travelers' fare, or ca our cars and trucks, they do repair. They serve us, doctors giving care. They're lawyers seeking process fare the garb of nuns and priests they wear. They've infiltrated everywhere. They've sat in the electric chair and judges were who sent them there. They may have long, short, or no hair, be homeless or have cash to spare. They may be single or a pair. Some play lion, some the hare. They like their meat well done or rare and some for veggies only care. They play whisk, bridge, and solitaire. No scarlet letter do they wear. No mark of cane and forehead bare. The moral giants ooze despair because they cannot lay them bare nor snag them in escape-proof snare. To turn our backs we do not dare. So on your guard, beware, take care. They're everywhere, they're everywhere. Who are they? 
these fearsome others, they're our very own sisters and brothers. Who is my sister and who is my brother? There will be people who look at Senator Fulton after something like West Virginia or Virginia Tech. He looks oriental. And I told him, if you run into things because of that attitude that's being shown, talk to me about it. We need people who are willing to stand for those who cannot stand for themselves. We have the power to make this a society where people have the opportunity to make a decent living. And for the record, I'm going to read what that policy is. Section 81-1356 sub 1. Equal employment opportunity means the right of all persons to work and to advance on the basis of merit and ability without regard to race, color, religion, national origin, age, sex, marital status, or physical or mental disability. One minute. And to this sexual orientation would be added. Now, the policy of the state is as follows, found in section 48-1101. It is the policy of this state to foster the employment of all employable persons on the basis of merit, regardless of their race, color, religion, sex, disability, marital status, or national origin, and to safeguard their right to obtain and hold employment without discrimination. Denying equal opportunity for employment is contrary to the principles of freedom and is a burden on the objectives of the public policy of this state. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Erdman, you're next, followed by Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator Chambers yield to some questions? Senator Chambers, would you yield to a question? Yes, some, he said, and I will. How, how many is some, Senator? Say it again. What number would be some? Well, that's an indefinite number, so it could be from one to however many you can get in before your time okay. runs out. I just wanted to make sure I knew the constraints. We had talked briefly. Before we get to the actual topic of the bill, the, the majority of the, of the language that's being amended, or the majority of the law stays the same. The reason that there are so many pages in the bill is because the name of the act is being renamed. Is that accurate? Yes, and there are some places where the term marital status is included in the listing where it does not currently exist in law. Correct. And the purpose of the name change would be, what would be the purpose of the name change? Of because it would more accurately reflect what these types of bills do. Okay. And the, the purpose of the act now, as I understand it, deals specifically with employment and based on the, the categories or the classes that are specifically identified in the act currently. Is that accurate? Yes. They are, they have a ready-made protection under the law against discrimination based on being a member of those classes or categories. And in the event that an individual finds themselves in one of those classes or is a member of one of those classes, probably more appropriately stated, and would seek remedy under law, what is that process? Well, you could first go to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and you'd have to establish that the reason for your termination was based on your being a member of that protected class. But if an employer can give any other reason, then you lose that protection because the, the termination was not based on your member, membership in one of those groups. And at the same point, then, if an individual doesn't find themselves as a member, is not a member, doesn't find themselves, but rather is a member uh, of one of those classes that is specifically designated in statute and would seek to use this act for a remedy, they would have this, they would have the same result essentially as somebody who was terminated for just cause. Is that a fair reflection of this practice? Uh, let me see if I, you ask, are you asking me that if a person is not a member of one of these classes, the protections that are given to these classes would not be applied to that person? Right, they don't extend to that person. That's true. And so if you were... Um, a white male. Yeah, under the age of 40 who is not a member of a religious organization or didn't profess any religious um, belief, I guess, and that would, be the, that would be one of the protections, they would have no protection as an example. Not, that, not, not based specifically. on being a member of the white male establishment. Right. But so, if you were fired for a reason 
that is not legitimate, then you would file your action based on that. And there might be some federal protections that you would have also. And would that, uh, that recourse, would that be handled directly with the employer or would it be through the same process, through the same equal opportunity process that's outlined in this act? Go through the Equal Opportunity Commission, but if certain types of discrimination are carried on, for example, by a political subdivision, you wouldn't have to exhaust the remedy found in this act. You could go straight into court right. or you could file a federal action. And that's not based on merely being a member of one of these protected classes. Okay. And the last question that I would have is, going back to the name change again, and I think this was mentioned earlier, maybe it was Senator Fulton, it's simply a reflection of, it's simply an updating of the name in your, in your attempt to better reflect what you're trying to accomplish should this bill pass. And it doesn't, there's, there's no, there's nothing that is in law now that hinges upon the name other than the fact that that's just what the One name minute. is referenced as. Right. When a person reads the bill, they know that it's prohibiting discrimination. It is not affirmatively saying you have to hire this person or you have to hire this person, otherwise you're not being fair. It is saying that you may not discriminate against this person based on his or her membership in one of these groups. And I, and I think that's accurate. It's, you cannot, dis, you shall not, the Non-Discrimination Act applies to those individuals or those groups or classes that are listed in the Act. Right. Not everyone, just those listed in the Act. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Erdman. Senator Cruz, you are next and recognized. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. I stand uh, in support of the amendment and in strong support of the bill. Speaking first to the amendment, since it is a religious matter, I have struggled with this. I am a member of a church which has uh, open membership. Everybody's welcome. In that process of discussing that with a very variety of congregations, I've tried to imagine a church that would say, you're not welcome here for any given reason. Well, you don't have to imagine it too much because you've found some that would take that position. But it's interesting, it's never for some uh, moral fault, like the person just got back from prison or someplace. It's uh, for things that are projected from one's own personality that we mirror and see the hate. I say uh, with others that we are talking about our own character here. It is a question of accepting into our society, not into our home. It's not a question of agreeing with somebody else's uh, statements, and certainly not a question of trying to guess uh, what their lifestyle might be. I smiled when someone asked uh, a few minutes ago, how do you define homosexual orientation? Well, uh, 20 years ago, I taught courses on that uh, all across Nebraska and uh, never did define it. I can't define heterosexual orientation. Uh, it's important to notice here, and it's been mentioned, but it needs to underline in our feelings. Our feelings, when they are there, are about sexual behavior, uh, hetero or homosexual. We have feelings. I have feelings about uh, misuse of sexual of sexuality and of abusing somebody because uh, of their sex, uh, male or female, by either sex. That is not what we're talking about here because that's not part of the definition and it cannot be. What we're talking about is the appearance of being gay. And there are persons who claim to be quite expert at that. And uh, they therefore can refuse to rent to somebody, some fellow who's got fine bones, uh, a marked walk and a different uh, voice box structure. Now, a different way of walking, a different way of being connected in the bones and the voice box structure are often signs of being gay. And you put that together as a package and then you're pretty sure that you uh, know what this person is. Uh, we must say to one another that that's not the basis on which you judge or fire somebody or uh, judge uh, who they are. 
Is it an emotional issue? Yes. I commend the group for the rational talk that's gone on here. Uh, in teaching those classes years ago, I always had persons who got very agitated within the group and would follow through with them later. Most of the men who became agitated on this subject were gay. They had absorbed so much abuse and they were so afraid of it that this was their protection. They would go to meetings like this and shout out against gay persons. It is terribly, terribly sad. But again and again and again, when I take the time and they finally get uh, my trust and I get their trust, um, we'd find out somebody who's really hurting inside, who is One minute. going for self-preservation uh, because of the perceived attitude. Many times that's not the attitude of the public. I don't think people care that much about it most, but the tremendous pain that's caused by it. Our statement here can do a lot to lead our people to recognize that we're not judging someone uh, even though we would disagree with some of their opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cruz. Those waiting to speak on AM 399 are Senators Avery, Friend, Nankis, Fulton, Carlson, Chambers, Erdman, Harms, and Roger. Senator Avery, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to start by pointing out an irony. Put your green copy on page 63, the last page. You'll see section 42. The following section is outright repealed, section 48-1109. And on the committee's white copy, page 2, that means that we are striking all references that permit discrimination against members of the Communist Party. I don't hear anybody talking about that. I wonder why. Well, could it be that we shouldn't be discriminating against people because of their beliefs? Maybe that wouldn't be constitutional. Let me suggest to you that there is a parallel here for this issue with uh, sexual orientation. The state, that is government, has the constitutional authority to discriminate against people on the basis of what they do, their behavior. It is constitutionally permissible for us to restrict how people behave. For example, you can discriminate against people who break the laws by imposing coercive punishment for things they do. What the state cannot do and should not do is discriminate against people based on who and what they are. For example, it is unlawful to discriminate against people because of their gender, their race, in the South, they had Jim Crow laws that discriminated against blacks because of what they were, not how they behaved, but who they were, who they are. And that was unconstitutional. I believe that that same principle applies here. Now, I realize that uh, there are a number of people who believe that one's sexual orientation is a matter of choice, that it's not a matter of nature, it's nurture. But I have looked at the scientific evidence, and I don't think there's a whole lot of scientific support for nurture, but there's a lot of support for nature. Twins, sometimes one will be gay some will, and the other will not. Is that a matter of nurture, some, some mistake the parent made? Scientific evidence says no. This. This bill is not an endorsement of any particular behavior or lifestyle. It is an endorsement of non-discrimination. Senator Fulton said that this bill creates a class of people for special rights. And I ask you, is, what is special about giving gay people the same rights you and I enjoy? What's special about that? In a just society, we must make sure that discrimination wherever and in whatever form it appears is condemned. We cannot and we must not tolerate discrimination. Now, I've received a lot of mail on this issue, virtually all of it expressing the same points. I suspect it's an organized effort. In my campaign for office, I was targeted 
by my opponent with a vicious piece of direct mail that attacked me on this issue. The brochure showed two male figures on a wedding cake. It says, Bill Avery supports gay marriage. It wasn't true, but I guess it didn't matter. For many people, this is a political issue, and it's only a political issue. But for me, it's a matter of conscience. I cannot tolerate discrimination anywhere in any form. So I will vote my conscience, and that means I will press the green button. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Avery. Before we go on, Senator Aguilar and myself would like to welcome 36 fourth graders from Jefferson Elementary in Grand Island and 10 adults. Would you please rise and be welcomed by your legislature? Thank you for visiting today. Mr. Clerk? Mr. President, some items. Enrollment and review reports 554, 573, 142. LR1CA, do select file. Enrollment and review also reports 221 correctly engrossed. Communications Governor engrossed legislative bills 367, 367A. Engrossed legislative bills 305 and 305A were received to my office. I signed these bills and delivered them to Secretary of State on May 18. New A Bill 247A, Senator Johnson, and appropriate funds to implement 247. LR211 by Senator Mines will be laid over. An amendment to be printed by Senator Hutkins to 358 and a notice of confirmation hearing by the government committee. That's all that I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Senator Friend, you are next and you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the legislature. I, uh, my, my brief stint on the Judiciary Committee, I, I know I had talked to, uh, members of the committee and Senator Chambers, we had, we've dealt with this issue. Senator Schimmick was right, dealt with it in different ways, not always in general file, not always on select file or whatever. I don't even remember if it, if it ever has gotten to that point. But certainly in committee, we, we talked about it. I don't think it'd be any surprise Senator Chambers' um, understanding of my, I guess, high-level views of the subject matter. but. I don't really think I've necessarily ever made it a secret, but um, he's very passionate about this issue. I respect that. Um, I did want to touch on the amendment, AM399. I've got to be honest, with, with, with respect to this amendment, um, this amendment is not flawed as a standalone item, but it's flawed, it's functionally flawed if you add it to this bill. The amendment becomes flawed, and then the bill becomes flawed. And, and no disrespect to the Judiciary Committee at all, I just, if, if Senator Chambers' bill, LB 475, is legitimate public policy, it should be legitimate public policy all the way down the line. We've touched on that a little bit in this debate, but that's it. That's what it should be. I disagree with the public policy argument. Quite frankly, I'll, I'll probably vote against AM 399 and the underlying bill. But if this, if this amendment passes, this public policy suddenly becomes pretty hypocritical, in my view. Go ahead and discriminate in this arena, but goodness knows, don't let that Fortune 500 company or anybody else discriminate. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, folks. I got a little bit of a problem with that. That notwithstanding, I think that I'm a little bit concerned, too, with and – and I brought this up in, in Judiciary Committee in the past. I actually – we've had conversations about it. The definition of sexual orientation or the lack thereof in this bill does concern me a little bit. It concerns me a great deal, actually. Uh, there are, Senator Ashford passed out a, a sheet, there are, in, um, in relationship to statewide employment laws and policies, there are sexual orientation laws, uh, 19 of them, I believe, all over 
the nation. It's my understanding that the, that the definition of sexual orientation in almost every one of those cases is a tad different. And I think part of that is probably because the federal government hasn't weighed in on it yet. But that notwithstanding, that's problematic. It's problematic that there is a um, discrepancy in some cases from state to state, and then the fact that we aren't even including one in here. I think that's problematic. But then, flat out, I, I, Senator Avery's right. Senator Avery is very right. A lot of folks use an issue like this either way as a, as a political tool. Oh, that person, you know, is for gay rights, that person is whatever. People do that. Senator Chambers, obviously, we all know that's not the case. I don't think anybody else out here yet has done that either. At least I hope not. My, my, our, my unease is philosophical, and it's personal. It's as simple as that. And, and I, can, I can go into that deeper, um, but I'm going to run out of time, obviously, and I don't know that I have to. Um, maybe he deserves a vote straight up on LB 475. I don't think I like this amendment, though. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Friend. Senator Natkins, you are next and recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Good afternoon colleagues. I rise in support of Amendment 399 and in support of the underlying bill, LB 475. And I do so for the following three reasons. That first, I want to talk about some general principles in relation to this public policy. Second, about some historical implications underlying both the amendment and um, Legislative Bill 475. And then finally, to talk personally about GLBT individuals and families in Lincoln, in my district, and in my life. This is not about individual feelings. This is not about religious teachings. This is about the state's complicit support of discrimination in the workplace based upon an arbitrary and suspect reason and classification. And let's be clear in this debate, um, specifically to address some of Senator Fulton's concerns, sexual orientation is separate and distinct from criminal acts as advocated by groups like NAMBLA. We're talking about sexual orientation, not criminal acts, and providing protection for those. My good friend and seatmate, Senator Ingalls, spoke early on in this debate, and he says that um, he believes in a world where employment um, decisions should be based on merit and performance, and so we don't need bills like this. Well, I think that's one of the most compelling reasons to pass legislation like this. I, too, believe in a world where employment decisions should be based on merit and performance of duties as hired to perform. And without passage of legislation like LB 475, um, we have no way to ensure that employment de decisions are based on merit and um, otherwise not based on arbitrary and suspect classifications. Second, to make a few points about history. Friends, the Civil Rights Movement did not begin nor end with the dramatic events of the 1950s and 60s. Since our nation's foundings, ordinary citizens have struggled to fulfill our country's ideals and promise of full equality under the law. In the Declaration of Independence, we, and I quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. From our very founding ideals forward, we continue to struggle with ideas encompassing basic equality, which is contained in this public policy discussion. As we move forward through history and see the adoption of the 13th and 14th Amendment, of the Civil Rights Act of the, of during Reconstruction, of the 19th Amendment, um, ensuring people like me, women, receive constitutional protection um, in their uh, 
struggle to attain full participation economically, socially, and politically. And we move forward into the Civil Rights Acts of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act. And then we move to more recent history. To quote a U.S. Supreme Court case, Lawrence versus Texas from 2003, in addressing um, some, some similar ideas, Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote, liberty presumes an autonomy of self that includes freedom of thought, belief, expression, and certain intimate conduct. Um, as we can see this progression through history, as reflected not only in our laws, but in our, our um, uh, judicial decisions, I think we need to keep that in mind. One minute. And, and then finally, friends, I wanted to share with you, um, we've all received countless um, emails, phone calls, and written letters in regards to, to this bill. Um, this is uh, uh, some correspondence received from a constituent in my district when I had written back letting them know about my support on this issue. And I'm going to um, allow the constituent to remain to protect their um, privacy. But just to quote from the email, they note, as a GLBT individual in Lincoln, one expects in aggression or indifference from one's elected representatives. Thank you for surprising me. At a time when I was beginning to lose faith in the system, it's nice to hear something positive. We're talking about individuals and families who are productive, who are taxpayers, who are parents, who are neighbors, who are citizens, and they feel nothing but Time. aggression and indifference from our government. There's something wrong there. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Nankins. Those waiting to speak are Senator Fulton, Carlson, 